Now, here we are at Palm Sunday, right? The entry passage to our most holy time of the church year. Today, Holy Week begins. Holy, sacred, special. And yes, also the beginning of Holy Week is special as Jesus enters Jerusalem. But we've heard the story so many times that we stop wondering about its oddness. Jesus tells the two disciples to go into the next village and find the colt that has never been written, just untie it and bring it to him. He even gives them their excuse to abduct the animal. If someone asked, just say, the Lord needs it. Of course. Now, even today, a colt is a valuable possession. And even more so 2,000 years ago. Isn't it weird that the owners just released their property without any reassurance of return? Do they know Jesus? Are they maybe even part of Jesus' wider network if they are satisfied with the explanation, the Lord needs it? Weirder even is that Jesus writes an untested cult. I don't know much about horses, but I do know that riding an animal that has not been broken in is just dangerous. But this one, this one just seems to feel the importance of the moment and peacefully trots along the path from the Mount of Olives down to Jerusalem with Jesus on its back and is totally unfazed by the people shouting and singing and throwing their cloaks on the road and waving left and right. It's a special story. And then there is the entry to Jerusalem. The triumphal procession into the city is that of a king. A king coming home victoriously after a war, showing off his power. It's a dangerous gesture in a city that is filled up with Roman soldiers to keep the peace during Passover celebration. But no soldiers show up. What makes this occasion, this entry of Jesus into Jerusalem special, not in the sense of weird, but in a sense of holy, is that Jesus creates an experience of life, of life in a different world, life under a different kind of king who uses the power to do good. And instead of victims of war, of conquered and captured goods and people, Jesus is followed and hailed by people he healed, whose sins were forgiven, who were shown love, and who were included. Deeds of power, but of a different kind. Holy means set apart. It's something that stands out, that is different from us, our everyday life. Something worthy of respect and devotion, of praise. And some of the disciples seem to feel God, seem to feel that holiness in the moment because they start to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen. That's what Luke describes. They say, hallelujah. That's the Hebrew word for praise God. And they praise God for Jesus' deeds of power, for love, healing, and forgiveness. There is a danger in declaring something holy. Holy things can be intangible. Holy people can be set on a pedestal for veneration. Holy experiences can be held in trust by institutions. And consequently, a lot of times over the course of our church history, holiness turned into hollowness. But Jesus doesn't want to be marveled at from a distance. We don't serve God with remote veneration. Holiness is something that inspires us to move above and beyond our daily busyness. So we need to let the holiness touch us, make room to let God enter, feel the up and down of emotion during this Holy Week, hear the texts, the stories about the Last Supper, Jesus' betrayal, trial, crucifixion, and resurrection, and take possession of them. Make them your texts by becoming a disciple on the path to Jerusalem. Sit at Jesus' table. Stand under the cross and come to witness the resurrection. And feel, 
feel the ambivalence. These are our stories, holy and at the same time full of very human experiences and emotions. It's almost like all of them have been condensed into this one holy week. We have admiration, love, hope, betrayal, friendship, forgiveness, trust, pain, death, grief, wonder, doubt, sacrifice, and faith. The whole spectrum of human love and brokenness in just a couple of days. That's just a lot. But I wonder how actively living through them this week might inspire you. God's love, healing, and forgiveness can't be hallelujah from afar. We have to actively use them, include them, feel them in our lives, and share them. Praying for those who are traumatized or grief so that they can't find the words to pray. Sharing with those asking you without questioning their motives. Listening to those who are usually ignored. Visiting those who are lonely. Asking for forgiveness. Embracing differences between people. Making room to let God enter, that's a process. A process that is shaped by all the human experiences and emotions that we individually encounter in our life and during this Holy Week. The process is probably never completed, for sure never perfected. But God doesn't need our perfection. God wants us to try love again and again. To say it in slightly changed words from Leonard Cohen's famous song, Hallelujah, it doesn't matter which you sing, the holy or the broken, hallelujah. Cohen ends his song with these verses. I did my best. It wasn't much. I couldn't feel, so I tried touch. I've told the truth. I didn't come to fool you. And even though it all went wrong, I stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah. Amen.